Welcome to this video. My name is Steve Bartlett. I'm a technical marketing engineer supporting the CX switching platform. This software enhancement is supported across all CX platforms as part of the 10.7 release, software release, and it applies to the event log and syslog features. So prior to 10.7, there were concerns from our customers over three areas affecting these features. The first was the lack of filtering of events entering the event log itself in the very first place. Uh, too many unnecessary events making it difficult to read or extract information very, very quickly and efficiently. And the other one was the lack of filtering events of events directed to a syslog server and their frequency. So this feature enhancement provides event log filtering to the event log itself and syslog filtering output to syslogs that are configured on the switch with rate limiting if it is desired. So this is what we'd find if we did a show events in the CLI we'd get this type of output as you can see we've got uh, an event ID, unique ID for a specific events we get the log the log info, that's the level. We've got a log error here. We've got a log warn here. And also we've got the obviously the content of each event. So we can filter on the event ID, the log level, and also some of the content within the log event itself, which makes it very, very flexible indeed. So this is our syntax that we, if we wanted to apply a filter to the logging uh, the logging event buffer or the, log, the event log would say logging filter and give it a name. We use the keyword enable and this would then apply the filter directly to the event log without this keyword enable applied. It does not get applied to the event log. So we need to have that. If we just wanted to apply this to a syslog, we wouldn't need this particular enable keyword. Uh, so we can apply that to a syslog, but it, does, it, it means that it doesn't mean that we can't apply a logging filter to the event log and a syslog as well. We can do the same, but to apply it to the event log, we need this keyword. That's a key thing. And then we can have some filters and they'll be prefixed by a sequence number, very much like an access list. So we'll have a sequence number, say of 10, then we've got some action that we can apply, permit or deny. So match criteria or part of the match criteria we can use is here. And then we've got some additional options, severity, lesser than, less than and equal to some variables here we can use. We can use the event log level and there they are. We can specify those or all of them, of course. And then at the very end there, we can tag in or include the regex filter. If we wanted to just filter out, for instance, LLDP, we could just put it in the string there. So if we wanted to apply this to the event log as a CLI example, here we are, we've got a logging filter event noise, I've called it, I've enabled it, so it's applying to the event log, and I've got some var variations of deny filtering here. So the first one is a straightforward deny on a range of event IDs, nice and straightforward. The second one is just a slightly variation of that to present the C the syntax that you can use to make it flexible, 1301 and 1305 to 1390. The third one, line 30, I'm denying a severity of any event log greater than info, that's being denied. 40, I'm denying events 1401 to 1428, with a severity greater than error. And the last one, I'm denying with the inclusion include anything with LLDP or CDP, and I'm using a regex filter for that. For that, So that's a slightly different syntax, but it makes it a bit flexible if you just wanted to eliminate all events concerning something like LLDP and CDP. So remember this, use of the enable command applies the filter to the event log. Without that, it doesn't get applied. So you must, must have that in if we want to apply it to the event log. And then the implicit permit. So if there's no matching rule found, the de default action is permit. 
that's just like a lot of access lists and, and there's always a, an implicit permit or deny, depending on which way around it is. But in this case, it's an implicit permit. The priority of the rules are defined by their sequence number. Lower the number equals higher, the higher the priority. That's just like an access list. And be aware of this, if an event is denied by an enabled filters rule, if there's an SNMP trap for that event, it will not be sent. So let's have a look at the syslog filtering. So here's a CLI example. I've got a login filter. I'm calling it event noise two. And I've got the same, uh, the same CLI syntax to apply for both the event log and the syslog. It applies both ways to both filter types. So I've just got some different examples here. First line, line 10, I'm divine, denying some event ranges, uh, 105, 1728, two events. The second one I'm denying anything that includes using MSTP. Um, but that's another regex filter there. And the last one denying severity less than warning. Any events with less than warning, I'm denying those events. And if I didn't want to apply a filter, I just have a straightforward logging my target syslog server. Uh, if I'm using a VRF, either management or elsewhere, other than default, I'd specify that. But if I wanted to apply the filter, then I'd exactly the same string. I just tag it on with the filter uh, keyword and the filter name that I want to use. And underneath here, we've got some syslog rate limiting examples. So here I've got one going to a syslog server, a rate limit burst of 10, which is 10 syslog messages for every 30 seconds, which is the default. The next one is a variation of that. I'm changing it now to 30 syslog messages for every 300 seconds, so I can do it uh, slightly, do a slight variation. This one here, I've got a different filter with a different burst rate with an interval of 33 seconds. And this one here, I've just applied a severity, severity of all critical events and above. The default level is info. So if I just let that back blank, it will just send everything from info up. And the last one, logging to all, all auditable, auditable events to the remote server. So I can specify that as a keyword there. So that's quite flexible, that. And... Some caveats, <coughs> excuse me. We support a maximum of 10 filters. That's on the on the switch. Each filter can have a maximum of 20 rules. Um, one filter, as I mentioned, to control the event log itself. Only one filter per remote, per remote syslog configuration, but we can have multiple syslog servers, and that means we can have multiple filters applied to each individual sys syslog server. So one one filter per syslog, but multiple syslog servers can be present with multiple filters. Maximum number of 100 event IDs can be specified per rule, and only POSIX uh, regular expressions are supported uh, in, in the includes rule, and there are some examples of just what they could be, and there's a, actually a link at the end of the presentation for you to, if you want to, find out some more information about regular expressions, there's a link there so you can make that, have a quick look. Debug logs sent to the remote syslog servers can be filtered only using regex or severity. Just be aware of that. Uh, we've mentioned the default action is permit if none of the rules match. Se sequence ID is unique within a login filter. If the same sequence ID is reused for a new rule, under the same filter, it replaces the previous rule, so the last match, effectively. If an event is denied by enable filters rule, the SNMP trap for the event, if it's applicable, will also not be sent. So we mentioned that earlier. So some additional information, the 10.7 functionality guide or the operating guide will be on the web and that will be published sometime in April. The CX, CX event log messages, the reference guide, we do have them. The latest one is on this link. It refers to 10.04, but obviously we don't change the event log IDs very, very often. Hence, the latest is 10.04. If you wanted to get a description of regular expressions, just follow that link. 
And if you want to get some more examples of regular expressions, take a look at this link. That's all I had to you. I hope you enjoy this small video. Bye for now.